Uh, my name is Jeff Talbot, and uh, I'm a concept artist, and also a CDW and Flinders graduate. Um, so I'll, today I'll kind of just go through a little bit about my journey, um, and I decided because it's fun to go all the way back to my childhood, uh, where I didn't have boots that fit me. And yeah, so I'm from a small little country town. It's not really that country, I guess. There we go. Yeah, so I'm a, from a small country town, Alice Springs, in the middle of nowhere. Um, I grew up driving trucks with my dad and my brother. Uh, we had a transport company called uh, Talbot and Sons Transport. Uh, my brother and I used to call it Talbot and Slaves Transport uh, because that was a lot of work. So basically, pretty much any free time I had as a kid, I would be out in the trucks in the middle of nowhere uh, helping, we moved houses, uh, this is my dad's truck from an aerial point of view. Um, yeah, at one point we had like 26 drivers and I was this like 12 year old kid telling these grown ass men where to go and although the benefit is I got to drive forklifts, uh, which is pretty fun. So this is taken from a light aircraft, this is uh, my dad driving and he's on the way to Docker River, which is um, a little bit west of Uluru. So I've seen Uluru, uh, Ayers Rock, pretty much a thousand times. It's kind of, it's still amazing every time you see it. Um, but yeah, so we used to go, and that's like right on the WA uh, NT border, all dirt road all the way through. Um, but this, yeah, it's a beautiful shop. Um, so I grew up in trucks. When I was 19, I jumped on a plane and I flew the fuck away from there. I'm going to stop swearing after that. I apologize. Um, so I flew to Flinders University to learn programming. Um, sort of a little background is that I never did art uh, as a kid. Uh, I play a lot of sports, uh, soccer, tennis, hockey, kind of any sport. Not f AFL because that is a dumb sport. And so it's, I know cricket as well. I don't know Australians, but we cannot make good sports. Um, so I, I was kind of a very active kid, uh, I couldn't draw, um, but I had a knack for programming. I learned it in year 10, by year 11 I did the year 12 course and I won the award for something, um, the whole class. I did everyone else's homework like a nerd um, and I also had a job and then after I finished during year 12, I was working as a web professional and well after year 12, I took a gap year, worked as a web developer for a year and they, just, they said to me, it's like, Jeff, I'm not hiring you next year. Everyone else here has a degree. I want you to get a degree as well. And I was like, okay. And that was scary. So I, I went to Flinders University to do programming. So I thought, yeah, I'm a web developer. I program. Well, it turns out they're very different things and I don't like programming. <laughs> so I was kind of a, I, don't, I should have put more slides in, I apologize for this section, but I, uh, I, I was kind of miserable in my degree um, and then I had one class, so I was doing a b Bachelor of Information Technology at Flinders University and I had one class which was with Katie Kavanagh, who you guys are probably all very familiar with, and it was Essential Multimedia and we had to do five creative assignments which was like put five things in a photo and do a Photoshop tutorial and I just like dedicated 90% of my time. It was just so fun. I had so much fun with this kind of thing. And then I went to Avcon because I love anime like everyone and uh, I stumbled across this artwork. Jamie Jones. This is the most amazing thing I'd ever seen in my entire life and it was a CDW banner. And Simon Scales was at the booth and I was like, what is this wizardry? Because my entire life, like, from being a truck driver's son, the only work you can do is lifting things, is practical, physical labor. So even being a web programmer was a very uh, weird thing for my dad to accept. And here I am discovering that all the video games that I love, Halo being one of my favorite series of all time, has art. People do this, people make a living from this, and I just, my mind was blown. And Simon gave me the pitch. He's like, hey, I've got this two-week workshop coming up. It's going to have this guy. And I'm like, well, I'm already sold. And then I had Aaron Beck, Mike Yamada, Victoria Ying, 
I um, mean, Simon was doing demos as well. Uh, ben Morrow, um, br uh, was Brian at that one? I don't think Brian was at that one. Um, but like, it was a long list of amazing people who I had no idea who the hell they were. But it sounded cool, and he showed me the artwork, and you know, come on. <laughs> I think every one of us in this room would love to be able to do this. Um, so, I sold my car. I couldn't afford the workshop, had this sexy beast, and uh, I was like, you know what? This is right. I have no idea. I've never done this anything before, but I was like, it just felt right. And I'm one of those idiots that just runs on gut impulse. And at 20 years old, I had no drawing experience or anything like that, and I was like, I'm going to go to this workshop. And uh, I did, and it, w it was amazing. And so while Jamie Jones was painting something very amazing like this, I was doing this, uh, which is a lizard man. He uh, has a tragic backstory, but you know we, we won't go into that. But so I, I didn't understand anything. That, that's the thing I want to reiterate. This workshop I went to, I had no idea what was going on. All I knew at that point in time was like, this, this is what I'm doing with my life now. I don't care. I'll make any necessary change to make this my life. Um, and that, that's a scary thing to do, uh, and I'm still paying the consequences of that, that choice. Um, but I haven't, I haven't really looked back since. Um, this was another thing I did uh, at one of the workshops. This is in Brian Winnier's workshop. Um, so workshop there, there no okay, so yeah, ba back in the day, in the old CDW, it was very separate. The Flint, so I was uh, a Flinders University student, and CDW were very separate things. They had nothing to do with each other. Um, so he... So the way CDW started was he was just doing one, two-week workshops where he would fly in a bunch of professionals. You, you probably know them as the master classes now, um, but they used to just be called a workshop. Um, and he'd just fly a professional in, and that was it. Um, however, he then began classes, and I was one of the very uh, first... I think I was like one semester out from being the very first students, but I was one of the... definitely the, the early, early students. Um, and... When we first started, there was like 30, 40 people max over all the classes. So when I walk in here now and I see how amazing and professional it looks, like the first, my friend Pei, uh, when he said he first found CDW, was like, I thought I was being scanned. The, like, they had cardboard taped over the windows to block out the light, and there was just like, like these PowerPoints, oh my God, where were those three years ago? It's amazing, it's like, it's you don't understand. There's like everyone was tripping over duct tape cables and stuff like that, and the projector was just sitting on a box that people would accidentally knock, and then it would be unplugged. And like, it, what it, what it has become now, I'm like I'm so incredibly happy for you guys and for CDW that it has evolved into this um, this amazing thing that it is now. Um, but yeah, so these are so, so the some the first things I did. Um, Brian is an amazing instructor. Uh, he could teach a dog to use ZBrush. Um, so, and you guys now have a, I believe you have a class with him where he just teaches online. That's incredible. I wish I had that. Because um, I had like two, three days with him. And I've gone to a couple more of his workshops since coming back. And he's such an awesome guy. And he's so well articulated and helping. But th this is the first thing I did. Um, and this is my Simon Scales piece. Uh, I was blown away by the fact that just black and white or and gray and in between shapes, you could create an environment. I was so happy with this. I was like, I posted on my Facebook, I was like, guys, look at this thing I did. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the introduction. Um, after, after the workshops happened, I, I changed, uh, I, I went out, I swapped out of my, uh, I finished my first year of programming and I swapped into a Bachelor of Creative Arts Digital Media, which is what you guys are doing today. Uh, when I did it, it was still very separate, um, and there was a lot of subjects that you had unfortunately do that were just not related to what, what I wanted to do. And yeah, it's, it's amazing now. Like I, again, I, I wish it was, but like, yeah, it, it's, I'm so happy for you guys that you get to experience this. Uh, and you just get to spend all your time at CDW. Because while I 
while I did for, uh, full-time university and had to do all that stuff, I was also spending all my Centrelink money, <laughs> all my youth allowance, uh, and I wasn't eating lunch or breakfast because uh, I couldn't afford it because I was paying off my CDW classes. And I would take um, one to two CDW classes a semester because that was all I could afford. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of show you the, the, the first, the starting kind of uh, early on assignments and stuff like that. I apologize, the first half is just going to be really bad artwork. It's going to look horrible. And then the second half is going to be like, eh, you, you kind of got better, I guess. Um, yeah, so these are one of the very, like, I kind of picked this and the other ones I'm about to show you because I feel like they're very important. While they kind of suck, they're the foundation for everything. So the wall behind you is full of all those, like, huge joints. That is what is going to make you good, is those fundamental stuff and, and those practices. And like, that's what I do half the time. Anytime I'm struggling with art, I just go back and relearn my fundamentals and then suddenly I'm like 20 times better. And I'm like, I don't even need this crazy next level stuff. I just need to learn how to render a cube. Um, speaking of cubes, here's a cube. This is uh, Tim's bootcamp, bootcamp one. Uh, great assignment, uh, learned so much. He teaches you about the one, two, three read. And he basically broke lighting down into a mathematical equation, which is halfway to black. So any value that I can find, I know that halfway is going to be its darkest side, and halfway in between those two values is going to be its lightest, like its middle value. It's not an exact science, but it does get you a lot of the way there, and then you can adjust based on your lighting scenario. So I'm not sure if they still make you guys do this, but this was an incredibly helpful assignment for me. And we had to do 100 of these. We also had to do uh, this intro to landscape. So when I started, I was actually a landscape person. I didn't really draw that many characters. Uh, Simon was my main instructor, my main teacher. And I did lots and lots of like landscape studies and uh, that sort of stuff. Um, as you can see here. So these are, m you know, I'm starting to get a better handle on shapes. Uh, uh, I'm now integrating photos, so this is still in my first sort of semester of, of class. So I, I, I truly like Simon is a fantastic teacher, um, and he really helped me to to work on these environment stuff. Um, and then we have this. So this was an assignment that uh, I should have grabbed Tim's notes as well, but Tim told us to draw uh, items on a table in perfect perspective. And as you can see, I only managed a plate. And that's kind of what I want to say. Like, it's such a simple thing, but at the time, it was so complicated for me to do. I just struggled so much. Um, and I'm kind of trying to emphasize on the, on the struggling. I, I failed a lot. Um, and it kind of makes me sad when I was going back through, I was like trying to find uh, images to send you guys. There's so many unfinished images where I tried my best and I didn't, and there's some weeks where I just didn't have anything at all. And that's kind of, I, I wish I, I could have produced more, but that's just part of the journey. Sometimes you just, you, you don't, you don't get the result, but I promise you, you start getting better. As you can see, I went from not, ooh, oh no, uh, not being able to draw a plate to now being able to somewhat draw a shark. And it's crazy perspective and it's kind of very lifeless and dead, but that's kind of, it's an important part. And, and speaking of lifeless and dead, this is my dwarf. And I, I put this guy in because I think, I attribute this section of my learning to be one of the most important in that this is when I was learning structure. I was learning to make things three dimensional and I was learning to make my drawing solid and, and have depth and so that they wouldn't like they weren't made out of jelly. Um, unfortunately, to learn this, I sacrificed gesture, which is a very important thing. And you're going to be in a tug of war between gesture and structure for a very long. I'm still in that, right? I've worked on my structure so much, and then I went back and I started working on my gesture. Um, and and gestures. For any of you familiar with like Cornish's work, he's very gestural, and it's beautiful. Um, but he also has this structure to it. It doesn't, like his stuff doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart. It feels strong. And it's kind of about finding that balance. Um, and so I kind of wanted to say, like, if your artwork looks like this, that is fine. Because this is important. Like, I if you're just figuring out the, getting the depth and getting the, the structure down, that is okay. It is baby steps. 
Um, one thing Tim taught me that was incredible is that you, you're seeing Tim McBurney draw, and he'll do this loose ass like our sketch, and then he does his finished image, like two steps. It's like what, huh? What happened in between there? Well, he sat me down and we had a talk, and he's like, I can do it in two steps, but you need to do it in ten steps. And I broke down my entire process into, I'll do my rough thumbnail, and then I'm going to do my solidify and structural stage being something like this. And then I'm going to add the costume on top, and then I'm going to add the secondary shapes, and then I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. And I just like had like all of these processes. Like, it just, I just like, doing a whole character was too much. It was just, oh, it like, so I'm not a natural artist. I still don't think I'm a natural artist. If I stop thinking for a moment, I will draw like a kindergartner. Um, so um, I had to break it down into these bite-sized little chunks that I could handle. And, and this is one of them. So I, honestly, like, I think like, if you are like, struggling, just simplify it. Go, okay, right now I'm just going to do this tiny little section of the drawing. And I'm just going to step through. And I, I will admit your result is going to feel a little lifeless because the more steps you break your artwork into, the more overworked it's going to look. But this isn't about creating good artwork. This is about creating good experiences, knowledge, and, and learning, you know, what's necessary. Um, so this photo is uh, when things started to click. This is a, uh, ooh, I don't know why you're, um, that is a good question. Uh, I think this, it says 2014. Alright, I'm gonna re. Um, this is about 2014. So I'd done CDW for about a year before, like, things. So this was a, a mentorship I had with Simon Scales. He was very kind enough to offer me a desk in the studio, and I came in every day and Simon would give me tasks and feedback, and this is the, the best result from that. Um, and there's a lot of things I would go and change now, but um, what's really cool, do I have a mouse cursor? This is my hand. Uh, and this, is, this hair is from a shampoo commercial. That's why he looks so amazing. Um, so as you can tell, uh, at this point, I'm playing with photos, and, and that's, You'll notice in my artistic journey, I'm a very photo-heavy artist. Um, and I, d I wanna stress not to not do photos, but to really learn your fundamentals. Because I personally feel in my journey that I jumped into the deep end a little too early. Um, and that's what you'll notice. Um, like, th this is kind of what I noticed in when I did these. These were the last environments that I did when I, because I, I saw myself as an environment concept artist and I was doing these and I kind of had a revelation. I have no idea how to draw. And because I can't draw, I can't design because the easiest way to design is just to draw. Um, and I kind of had a talk with a lot of the teachers. Uh, Peter Yong uh, was the character designer. I think he's back now, which is awesome. He's so cool. Um, and I realized that the easiest way to learn to draw is to do characters. <laughs> so I was like, okay, time to do some characters. Um, so I, I did leave out a bunch of like my failed attempts, but this is kind of when things started to click. I, I had no idea how to finish things, but now my artwork was like in, in characters was starting to look solid. She doesn't look lifeless and dead. The dog only looks a little bit stupid and badly drawn. Like. Th things are sort of starting, I, ha like I have an understanding of perspective and stuff like that, and I will finish this. <laughs> I, I say here on the stream, one day I will revisit this piece and I'll finish it because I love that giant wrench. Um, and, I, and like you'll notice like the things, I just like really massive out of proportion stuff on designs, and that's kind of something, like own what you love to draw because that will kind of become your identity. Um, and don't stress if it's not coming through. It happens. It, it, it comes with time. I've never once tried to learn style, ever. 
I just have tried to learn how to draw. I've tried to learn my fundamentals and I've tried to learn art. The style that comes out is just what happened. So never like feel that you don't have a style. It'll happen because when I started to learn to draw, um, I was, I became Peter Yong because he was my teacher. And then I started learning from Tim McBurney for characters. And then I became half Peter Yong and half Tim, except twice as ugly. But so I kind of, you're, kind of, you're going to start emulating your instructors. And, and the cool thing is there's enough instructors here for you to learn from that you're going to take, oh, I'm going to take 5% of Peter. I'm going to take, oh, ooh, I love Cornish's gesture and his life and his storytelling. I'm going to take a little bit of that. I'm going to take a little bit of Tim. Uh, Simon has his awesome graphic shapes. I'm going to take that. And eventually you become this crazy unique person and you didn't even try. It's just kind of like at the end of every class, I threw away a bunch of things, not to be mean to the teachers, that I didn't necessarily want to be and I kept bits I loved. And then I, ha I now have enough bits where it's sort of like I'm starting to have my own identity but I've never actually like actively sought it. It just kind of happened because you'll naturally go, Peter Young will tell you something and you go, that's awesome. I love that. Doesn't feel right for me. And then Tim will tell you how he did it and you'll go, oh, you know what? That's actually a really interesting solution to that, that problem. I like that. But the way you finished it, I feel like I, I like the way Peter did it. Uh, and you sort of, uh, yeah, I, I'm rambling. But anyways, so this is one of the assignments which I feel like I really, really leveled up. We had to draw 100 insects. Uh, Prey mantis is my favorite insect because it has these little long arms. And I think they are awesome because they are oversized and ridiculous. Um, and this, as anyone can, like, who is around at the time, uh, actually, a good story on that is Carlo Arellano, when he came for his workshop here, uh, I was sitting at the front like a nerd because I always sit at the front. Um, and he said to me, I can see the steam rising from you. Like, I am such a, like, I, I get so angry. And I'm like, I gotta, like, work. And I'm so much more chill now. But when I was learning, I, like, I would try the hardest ways. Like, I would be, like, planning everything out. And it, I would, it, I'd be dying inside. But that was so important for my artistic growth. That pain, that was me growing. That was me learning to do that. And I could probably do this just from like memory now without really plotting out the perspective. I I'd still should. I, I'm not perfect. I, I, I don't want to pretend like I'm a guy. I'm, I have so much more to learn. But, um, and then we painted it up. And honestly, it scares me because I don't think I've done anything better than this since. And this was a long time ago. Um, but this was when things really started to click for me. And I remember being so proud, putting this on the wall and there was these other artists at the time who destroyed me in every class. And honestly, they are way better than me. But um, this one class, I got you. I beat My Prey Manus is better than yours. If I ever get a job, I'm going to be the Prey Manus man. Um, I, so I was, I was so proud uh, of this achievement. And, and, and I feel like you've got to celebrate your achievements, even if it's a little thing. And for me, it was just like I finished a thing and it looks like a finished thing. And even though after this, like, I, I want to kind of state is like, art isn't like, it's not always this. Sometimes you go back down again. Um, so, you know, I did this and now I'm back to doing this. Like this is, uh, so Peter Young's Pinocchio assignment. Um, I think it was still part of when things started to click. I uh, had a lot of fun with this. Um, we had to do... Uh, 20 or 10 thumbnails or something like that. I did a, a lot more. Um, and uh, th so you can see like the quality difference, right? It, it's, not a, it's not a straight path. Sometimes you, things are going to click and sometimes they're not. Even now, I, I sometimes draw worse than this. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that's cool. Um, but you just, you just keep pushing on. Um, and then these were like the more loosey-goosey uh, renders. And then the, me trying to be like super clean. And that took a long, long time. But again, th these were like, it's not great, but th this is achievements for me. Personally, when I did these pieces, I noticed something that changed inside of me. And I was like, yes, I feel like I have something here. And this was like clean lines, perspective. It's kind of coming in together. 
um, this is another achievement. This is a really important assignment. Is like these are figures all created from imagination, and I had the Michael Hampton book, and this is like attaching the anatomy to it. And this is an important assignment because it's all well and good doing uh, anatomy studies from life. You should definitely be going to life drawing and doing those studies, um, but there's something about making it your own and creating your own anatomy and your own like characters and using that knowledge because I, again to, to quote Carlo uh, badly because I have a terrible memory um, is he was saying something like you don't it's not like you don't know something until you've studied it and applied it into your own work so if you're doing a study of a helmet that's great you did a study of a helmet you don't know what a helmet looks like until you have put a helmet into one of your own designs because now you understand a helmet, you understand how it works. So if you're doing studies of stuff, make sure you do your own creative drawings that include that study. And it can be just like little things, right? If you're doing a study of a hand, just in your next character design, just make the hand do something a little cooler than you normally would. Don't put him in the pockets, don't hide it behind the shirt, or you know, don't hide the feet behind you know, bushes and whatnot. Um, and the, this is... Uh, now, when I did a Mulan redesign to make it more like Lord of the Rings, and I feel like, again, this is like a, a big accomplishment for me, it actually feels like a proper design. It feels, the character feels solid, there's not really any anatomy. It could be better, my line work isn't great, my design is okay, but th these are, this was an achievement for me. Yeah, so this is when I was heavily under Tim McBurney's mentorship, uh, like a tutelage. So he was, because I can only take so many classes, uh, because I'm a, a, like, at the t again, everything I've done is private student. I've had to fund my entire way through. Um, so I, I didn't always have like the, I couldn't take such a, a large amount of classes until uh, my honors year where I was able to do a sort of a scholarship here. I organized with Simon where I was finally able to like fully dedicate myself. And I have to say like Katie Kavanagh is an amazing person and she did such an amazing job um, helping me n like manage CDW and Flinders University. She was able to give me the ability to full-time study CDW and also be able to claim it on university work. So I honestly like, I, I attribute a lot of my, well I attribute all my success to my instructors and my mentors because I am nothing. I started at 20, I knew nothing. All my knowledge comes from these people and that's why I'm incredibly grateful for schools like that. And that's like why I hope I want to, like one day can become a teacher and, and give back to the community. Um, Cause I, I don't feel like I'll ever be able to teach Tim McBurney anything. He's already perfect. Um, but yeah, so, and this was, uh, in the yeah mech design class, uh, I used to do a little bit of graphic design, so I wanted to have a lot of fun with this. So th this is like, yes, things are coming together, they're looking good. And I was starting to achieve stuff, so I was, re I was really happy about this. Um, fun story though, about uh, this class and this class. Peter Young was very happy when I handed up all this. He was very happy, because I went above and beyond the brief. And then I had mech design the next day and I didn't even get the homework done. And he was incredibly furious. So life lesson there, if you're gonna go above and beyond the brief, make sure you hit the brief for every other damn thing too, right? Especially when your teachers are the same person and or even if they're not, because they talk to each other. So like, I definitely think that if you get, if they say do 10 thumbnails, do 20, right? Um, it's about mileage. Um, don't just do 20 for the sake of 20, put the effort into doing 20. But the number they're giving you is not like, they want to give you more, but they have to respect your time and, and there's a lot of stuff. So just, uh, you know, do more of that stuff. Um, all right, so I kind of want to go into where I am today, which will require me to go to the internet. Hopefully I come up. Oh, I can't even spell my name. Who am I? Um, sorry for my terrible sense of humor. I hope it would get more laughs, but I'm just here by myself in an empty room. <laughs> All right, so here I am today. So uh, I am skipping over a whole lot. Uh, I've had a long life. I am pretty old now. 
Um, but this is uh, where I'm at. So I just came back um, from America studying at Brainstorm. It's my second time uh, studying in America. I actually went to study at uh, Concept Design Academy as well. Um, but I, I don't really want to talk about those. I just want to talk about kind of where I'm at today. Um, so this is kind of, because finance is, is, is a tough thing, I actually took between, I finished uh, CDW in 2015, that's when my degree finished, in 2015. Uh, 2016, I went to um, the Concept Design Academy for three months. I came back um, and I wasn't good enough to get work. And I had no money because I just spent $20,000. And that was all my savings. So I actually had to take a year and a half off from art to work as a web developer again. And I worked in a finance company for six months and that was soul destroying. And then I worked in a, was well, meant to be a better company for a year. <laughs> and that was soul destroying. Um, but in the last month they got a whiteboard that I could draw on. So that was nice. Um, so sometimes the, the path isn't straight and, and sometimes you're gonna have to take a detour. But what, what's important is that you keep going, right? This is not the easiest career. And honestly, I couldn't care less about, I mean, I need, the only reason I want money is because I need to eat and I need to pay my brother rent before he kicks me out because he has a girlfriend now and I think he likes her more than me. Um, so yeah, d don't worry if your path isn't, isn't straight. Um, just, just keep going. I had to take a massive year and a half detour and I thought, I could manage art and work, and I couldn't. And, and I feel like that's something that people need to talk about. It's okay. Sometimes you just can't do it. Not everyone is that, because you hear about like, you guys only get little bits and pieces of what's happening in America, and everyone's like, oh, you gotta hustle, and you gotta do all this stuff. Sure, you gotta work hard, but you gotta know yourself. You need to sleep, and you need to take care of yourself, you need to explore, hang out with your friends, play video games, experience media, new things. That's what thrives your art. Um, and I just couldn't manage doing uh, working and also uh, doing art. So I kind of had to take a break. I, I tried to do things here and there. My friends were trying to be really supportive. One thing I, I managed to do is I, I made a commitment. I was like, Simon, I'm going to run life drawing. And I ran life drawing every single day for a year. Uh, so every single Friday for an entire year. So I knew that at least I would always go to life drawing because I have to, I'm the one running it. Because um, I knew that if I didn't make such a commitment where pe people were relying on me, because um, I can let myself down as much as I, I want. I don't care, I've, I've been doing it all my life. But I hate letting other people down because that's, I, I, <laughs> I'm a people pleaser. Uh, I, re I, I don't want to waste people's time. I really respect like effort that people go in to help you because I've had such an amazing, like I've gone from nothing to a crazy life-changing, so many crazy life-changing experiences. And it's all because of amazing people who gave me the time of day, who went above and beyond what they needed to do to help me. And that's kind of why I am the way I am, is because I believe that is the best way. Because especially when I start like teaching and, and helping my friends, I got way better. Because I was like, hey, you know, you should like fix that thing. And they were like, oh, go away, Jeff. Oh, but you're right, okay. Like you can talk to Duncan about that. He hates me. Um, I hope in a friendly way because I was always like, Duncan, fix your hands and feet. Oh, and I was always giving him feedback. But now Duncan is a beast, all because of me. <laughs> like, you can thank Tim and, you know, Ned and all that, but it's me, okay? Um, <laughs> but, like, I, I, in, in helping Duncan, every time I tell someone not to do a thing, I'm going to look like an idiot if I make that same mistake. So now it's in the back of my head, like, oh, Jeff, your hands and feet need to look amazing. Because if they don't, you know, someone's going to notice and they're going to call you up on it and you're going to look real silly. Um, so yeah, this, this was a brainstorm uh, just a year ago. So it started last year. Uh, class with Richard Lyons. And we had to redesign. I uh, don't even know what the story is. I kind of just did my own thing. But um, anyways, this was 1330 plus, And what I learned was taking something else and in, in putting it into... <laughs> That's a really bad description. So I, I learned about like percentages in design and I, I took medieval as my main 
and I put modern day military and I slapped it in there. And so that's sort of the balance I was trying to find was how do I make these medieval soldiers look super tactical and have all the, the packs and all that sort of stuff, but also have them feel medieval and, and, and within the time frame, within the thir- uh, like the 1300s, right? And so I had to, research is an important thing. My first um, set that isn't actually on my portfolio was, uh, it just looked like a medieval guy holding an assault rifle. So I completely started again from scratch halfway through the course and I was better off because of it. Because now I did my research on these, um, yes, thank you. I was gonna like scroll down and like look at my wording here to remember what it was called. Um, but yeah, so th- these are my explorations um, coming up with different designs. So I'd already figured out what the character looked like and I just um, started doing designs. I'd like to think, there's, a, there's I mean, there's lots of different categories, but if I was to say there's two categories of character designer, there's character designer and there's costume designer. And I'm more in the costume designer aspect because I generally just grab a re- dude and you're gonna notice it's always gonna be like, this grumpy ass guy with a beard because I'm a grumpy ass guy without a beard and it really hurts me that even at 26 year old, I still can't grow facial hair, like not nothing. Just, it's so, everything you're gonna notice is just gonna be like dudes with facial hair. I'll probably draw chicks with facial hair as well. I don't know. I just want a beard guys, it's not fair. Um, I've seen 14 year olds with better beards than me. Like that's, that's not cool. Um, but yeah, so th- this is a more of concept. This is a really arty, like thing I like to do where like, cool, here's like all the things, you know, um, but here's the juice. This is what they want to see in a studio. If you're not going to render something, you need to show what things look like, um, a- adding all the, this kind of stuff. Um, I feel like I should power through it, but here's like thumbnail explorations. And you can see that some of them like sci-fi and some of them look a bit more like standard military. And I was just exploring this guy with a motorbike. Um, you know, there's like mech heavies and like, I, I really had no idea where this project was gonna go. I mean, one of them is a bear, which is awesome. And more people compliment me on this bear than anything else in this project, it's kinda, kinda sad. But, um, you know, and I was like, oh, do I go traditional fantasy with the, like the elf as an archer or do I, you know, maybe I have some crazy ass long arm dude, cause he looks amazing. Um, yeah, and then we did like little thumbnail explorations and um, so I kind of like categorize like, you know, generic fantasy with your dwarf and your elf and, you know, your human and then, or like tr- more traditional, like m- more, um, military, um, medieval um, stuff. So I was, I was exploring and I think that's an important part when you do your thumbs, it's about exploring. You, you have your parameters, but feel free to push as far as you can within them. Just make sure you always hit at least a couple designs that, that feel right. Um, I didn't actually pick any of these. I, I actually, these uh, C is what I went with, and then I scrapped the project, and I, I completely started again with this guy. Um, all right, I'm just gonna power through some of this. This is, uh, I did a mentorship with John Park uh, at Brainstorm, and this is me. So I just took a class with Richard Lyons, and now I'm like, I'm Richard Lyons now. And I learned his style, and I have now copy him. And that's perfectly okay. There's nothing wrong with finding an artist you love and learning their style because no matter what you do, it's gonna end up looking like yours because he loved military, crazy, like sci-fi techie stuff. And uh, I like fantasy. So no one's really gonna get angry at me for looking like Richard Lyons because I do fantasy. And even Richard Lyons himself, he was my teacher, so he's not gonna care. Um, but yeah, you can find, if you have an artist online that you love, just learn from them. Um, I'm gonna, I feel like I'm being too slow, but. Um, and this is a, I think exploration and, and learning from design is really important. Um, I would love to talk more in depth about this kind of methodology of thinking uh, because it is something incredibly awesome and it's so simple, but it's also so complicated and you're gonna become such a beast designer if you master it. It's called form language. And um, so I'll just kind of take you through. This one is the form language and I took the idea of multiple. So multiple skeletons, that was my brief. How do I design a skeleton with the word multiple? So I thought, oh, there's these skeletons and they hold shields and on the back of the shields are other skeletons. And then you get like, so I'm thinking Dark Souls. 
and you walk into like a coliseum round thing, and then this one skeleton runs in. So that's what this uh, top thumbnail is. Uh, it's very good, clear drawing. So these skeletons all just start running. They slam into each other, and then they land, and they create this moving circular structure with arrows, and be crazy. And I think every Dark Souls player would hate it. Um, this is skeleton plus insect. So I was trying to combine insects into skeletons. Um, these are, I, I always have this feeling like I need to do something a bit more generic, otherwise no one's going to like my stuff. So these are my generic guys where I'm just like, okay, I'm going to take a skeleton, I'm going to make him look a little fancy. Um, and these little adorable guys, oh my god, they will be so cute until they're killing you. Um, and then this is a sort of a bit more generic stuff, but he's like a centaur dude, and this is uh, that Star Wars robot. Um, and this is this guy is really fun because he is. Um, There'd be a good one. So I, okay, so an important thing to think about is gameplay. Like you know, you're not just designing a still image; you're designing something for a world. And I don't really can like. It's sort of hard to explain. I don't think I'm an artist. I don't actually can like I don't do art for fun. I've always wanted to do art for games, or for movies or animation. I've always sought like. My medium for design is art, but I want to work with people and I want to make a world. I want to make a thing that people can play. I want people to be inside my crazy head. Um, so that's why I'm always trying to think about, okay, well, maybe there's a friendly one, but also these guys are like walking loot things. You know how in Dark Souls there's like a little beetle things with a gem on the back? This is basically the same thing. These guys just have these giant packs of just sh like stuff they've accumulated over the time and you just end up killing them. And that's, that's really awesome. And this, oh, I love these shapes. You'll notice I love elongated, long, sexy shapes. So I, I reuse this helmet in one of my other designs because I love it. Um, so this is skeleton plant multiple. Because I thought, how cool would it be to walk into like this, mush this thing of giant mushrooms? Like, oh, wow, and there's like mist and stuff everywhere. Like, oh, there's a lot of mushrooms in here. And then you tap one, and then it starts like breaking apart and you're like oh damn that's a skeleton mushroom right so be okay like animate like be expressive because that's what's going to make cool designs um or like there's a tree like oh that's an interesting looking tree oh damn there's a skeleton tree um yeah i should stop yelling i'm on a mic um yeah and this is uh, again insect uh and multiple uh they kind of all do multiple i'm not that good at form i'm learning as well um but this was fun um, yeah, because how crazy with this centipede skeleton coming around and it's like <laughs> just like super around the map. Oh man, I, just, I designed things that I think would be awesome. So Crusaders of Might and Magic, just a backstory, it's actually a game that came out in 1999 and I loved it. It was amazing. It's actually incredibly bad and it was a huge flop and everyone hated it, but I loved it. So I was like, I'm going to redesign this the way I thought it was, the way I remember it. Uh, and I still don't think I've hit it. Like, my memory of the game is still better than my design, so I'm going to keep pushing that. But that's kind of what I went in this project. I was like, how can I make this game I love? And using everything we know today, how can I make this game better? If we were to make this game tomorrow, what would it look like? And that's how I decided to design this project. Um, yes. And then... Da -da 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 loading. Um, I started doing my generic skeleton because I told you I have a problem with genericness. Um, I wanted to have <laughs> at least one generic thing just to show that I can do it because I, I have this fear that if someone doesn't see that I can do a restricted design, then they'll never hire me. Because like, especially when you're starting out, you, this is all my, I, I want to say everything I'm saying is my personal I experience and it's not as educated if you were to talk to like Ned and Tim and Simon. Like those guys know a lot more than I do. So if I ever say something counter to what they say, they're probably right and I'm probably wrong. Um, but th this is my thoughts anyways. Um, yeah, so I wanted to cover the generic enemies because it can't all be crazy. A lot of games have villagers and peasants and just normal blend into the scenery kind of environments. And you can't have a crazy design if there's nothing to compare it to, right? How do you know it's crazy? If everything's crazy, then it's kind of like overwhelming. Um, but yeah, so I did some like skeleton exploration on the design and you know, turn around and stuff like that. We'll carry on. And then this is like, okay, I've got my generic skeleton. How do I make him cool? 
I'm going to give him living insect armor. His armor is going to be made of insects that are alive. And then you're going to wear it. And that's going to be horrible. Imagine cosplaying that. Oh, God. Um, that's actually another thing to think about when you do character design is uh, cosplaying because um, people love to build your design and that's actually a really awesome thing to think about because if they can build it then it's a good design because it's it works um, although those cosplaying people are crazy good at building things so maybe they're just good and you're bad um, but here's some like different variations of like configurations of way insects are living I also have uh, plant living plant armor that I haven't posted up yet because I still need to finish like the fancy top view. I've got living bird armor where the guy's covered in birds. One skeleton is just made up. He's just got like these nests and these little birds thing. He's so adorable. I just want to design him just because he looks so ridiculous. Yeah, I design stupid shit. Um, yeah, and then so here's some trolls. Um, you know, just exploring trolls. And there's some ogres. So this is again, so the trolls are pretty generic. I just wanted to draw trolls or how I feel like trolls look. But I was thinking about trolls are a tribal race with some level of education, right? They can build tools, they can build huts and structures. While ogres are just gluttons. Like, look at this guy, look at his gut. Uh, and I'll show you a more finished version of this guy later. Um, but so ogres are just gluttonous blobs of fat that just eat. And they just, that's all they care about. But I was like, okay, how can I make these ogres a bit more interesting rather than just being the generic ogre you'd see in um, like Lord of the Rings or something like that or like generic fantasy illustration. I was like, what happens if I combine a mole, like a mole rat, uh, this is like the star nose mole rat with an ogre? So there's this ginormous creature that you can see the, the little scale, but it's now like blind and it's got the little tentacles and it's like, it's about noise and smell. And so if you can like sneak past its cave, you should be all right. So it's like thinking about those things. That makes interesting gameplay. Let me know if I'm going too slow. Oh, it's been an hour. Oh my God, guys. I'm going to... Anyways, here's some other stuff. So I'm starting to photo bash render stuff up because I need to show that I can take my designs all the way to the finish. Um, and so here's uh, one of the characters. I, I started with photos on this one. I didn't do any drawing. And then I like painted her up. Um, this is Necros, he was fun. I actually started with drawing on this one, uh, except the skeletons. I actually made this first, then traced it, because that's a lot of ribs, guys. And then I, yeah, so I backwards, you know, you can do that. No, it's a portfolio, no one's gonna know. Um, but yeah, so he, he was awesome. And my most recent project I finished literally like two days ago, uh, this redesign, because uh, one thing is, I wanted to expand my portfolio, it's all fantasy, and I need to show variety, because it's an important thing. Have your 90, 80% of like, this is me, and be proud of it, but also have your 20% of like, but I, no, I can also do this if I have to, because the company's really gonna appreciate it, because it makes you hireable. Uh, so the next thing on my list is to do sci-fi, like something crazy sci-fi, and also add an environment and ZBrush in. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so I did like a turnaround, um, I drew that out and then I, you know, color schemes and I did all the design elements like separated. Um, with this design, I really wanted to tackle doing skins because every game is a skin now. So you're most likely going to get a base model and say, hey, you can change this area, this area and this area, but you can't change anything else. And so those were the limitations I placed on myself. I, I took every skin from the game, I took screenshots of it and then I just basically color coded. I was like, this area can change 100%. This area can change 20%. This area cannot change. And then with that knowledge, I went in and I was like, okay, this is what I can do. And I just really wanted to design like this silver, shiny, impractical military gear. Um, I'm gonna, yeah, if you guys, yeah, last words. Um, a few of you would have seen this. This is my improvement from when I very first started in 2013. It was a P.D. Young's character design class. Uh, 2015, which was Tim McBurney's uh, character design class two. And 2018, which was uh, just now. Now you've seen this and I kind of, I feel like it deceives you. And I think, I mean, it's good to show this, but there's something I'm not saying 
and there's something that you're not being shown, which I feel like is an important, uh, a very important part. And that is this. In my CDW folder, there's 3,881 files. In my personal project file, there's 1,000. In my Concept Design Academy, there's 1,000. In my Brainstorm, there's 600. And that's not all of my folders, and that doesn't include my sketchbooks. And just, I actually do a lot of sketches in digitally, and I just delete the layer, because it's just a study. So what I want to say is like, um, I want to finish on, uh, yeah, sorry. Oh no, I've renamed it. Um, yeah, anyone can become awesome at, I should say art, but drawing. You just need to work hard. Um, I haven't done anything that you guys couldn't do. Uh, I mean, I still have a long way. I, don't, I hate, I feel weird being up in here because I feel like there's still so many things that you guys are probably better at than me and I would love to, to learn from. Um, and I just kind of wanted to finish on that. Um, yeah, any questions for my rambling or you're just blown away by how incredibly annoying I am? I do have a question about the current work environment. So just anything you want to say on that? Or yeah, so um, I like to think about myself as entry, entry level. Um, and I, I didn't show, I should have shown this, but I have done a little bit of uh, artwork. Actually, this is my ZBrush sculpt of that fat dude. He's so fat. Um, I'm working him up. He's going to be part of a bigger illustration. Because um, I want to show ZBrush and environment in the one hit, because then that'll help flesh out my portfolio a lot more. Um, but I did these for a game called Dungeon Haven. Um, and that was an incredible experience. So everything, or, or I don't want to talk about the game too much, um, but yes, yeah, so that was that sort of stuff. Uh, I also designed some crates. Um, I was only on this project for a little bit. Uh, it was more of a learning experience than a working experience, but it still like allowed me to show it. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm not an environment guy, but I, I feel like when you have a solid skill set, you can transfer into any kind of thing, any task, just break it down again, simple things. Okay, I know how to draw, I know perspective. Actually, I simplify, this is tip up perspective where I just flattened out perspective completely just so I can make it easier to draw. It makes it super easy for 3D artists as well. Um, and yeah, uh, I just kind of, I tackled that. Um, yeah, this is, uh, this one I kind of go through, this is the importance of drawing. This is dynamic sketching. So these are like one of the sketchbooks. And the, I think the assignment was to do like five pages of lines. I did like, I think 20 something and there's Ewan Gallion because I'm a nerd. Um, but as you can see, it's like a lot of like drawing. So this kind of stuff's really fundamental. It's drawing in your sketchbook. This is something that I didn't do when I started, but when I did start doing it, I improved so much. Um, yeah, and then like, alligators and stuff. But yeah, the, the current work environment, my, I've been applying to a lot of jobs. Unfortunately, I, like, with my portfolio, I can't do indie work. No indie person is going to look at my photo bash crazy, more realistic stuff and go, yeah, I'm going to have him for my mobile game. And so that's something you have to be aware of is like, where does your work fit? And I know I'm targeting Sony Santa Monica, God of War. So, I'm still not there yet. If you look at Della Longfish's art, I'm nowhere near his, his level or Vance Kovacs. Um, but yeah, you, so I have, I've got a few studios that were like, hey, we love your work, but there just isn't anything. And recently I've been told from a few of my working friends to add the, the landscape work in because character, especially character design is super competitive and you're, you're competing with some crazy people who like, I don't compare to um, and so it's kind of it's hard especially being an international person I'm trying to get a visa to the L to LA the LA um, and so it, it's it's a bit difficult so I haven't haven't had the most success freelancing but that's just part of it right um, you just keep trying uh, once I finished my military dude I sent another art uh, like email blast and you just got, you got to be in it to win it. You just email every studio. There's a website called uh, Game Dev Map. GameDevMap.com. 
if you go to this website, there's all the game developers. And if you click on one of these, it will take you and to their website. And then from their website, you can find their contact details. And then you can email them. And you can email every single one of them. And there's a lot. Um, yeah, and actually to talk about, um, feel free to throw me off stage, but uh, I, I wanted to, ooh, Rebit. Uh, Rabbit Hood Studio. So um, I, when we did the mentorship, John Park was like, hey, you have an environment artist, you have a prop designer, you have a ZBrush artist, you got a character designer, why aren't you guys a studio? And we're like, oh, I guess we do have enough members to create a studio. So Rabbit Hood Studios is just a bunch of friends and I, and we went, yeah, we'll create a studio. And then we did it, we art blast, and we emailed every single person we could find. And we got work. Um, we worked on an animation, um, which is, I can't talk about. <laughs> uh, we worked on a mech game, which I can't talk about. Uh, I didn't get to help out because I'm obviously the fantasy guy, So, but my, my roommate was doing it, um, and oh, his drawings are so cool. Um, and we, we got a little bit of other work. Unfortunately, I think like 80% of our members, I think we had like 10 to 12 people, are now working in a studio. So we don't really have the people, but this is something we can always invest in later. So it's an incredibly important thing, like make your friend groups now. The people you're sitting next to could be the people you're working with in five years time. And if you can't find work, you create your own work. You know, if you have friends who is a programmer and a 3D artist and you're a designer and you can do environments and stuff like that, just make your own thing, right? Make your own game, get it going, go to the conventions and stuff like that. You, there's, like, if, if you can't find work, you just create it. The cool thing about doing a studio is it's way more professional. Rather than being, hey, I'm John. I'm a, I'm a concept artist, I do stuff. Be like, hey, I'm Rabbit Hood Studios. We have members who can do this, do this, do this, our rates are this, anything you want we can do. We have the people to do it. If you want five designers, we'll give you five designers. And that's way more professional. And the company's gonna go, oh yeah, you got a website, you got an email, you got a business number, yeah, let's do it. You seem professional because sometimes the only thing that separates a professional artist and a not professional artist, it isn't quality. It's that the professional artist is working. And when a, a when a recruiter or something goes, hey, there's these two people, that guy's worked on stuff, I'm gonna hire him rather than you, even if you're like slightly better. Um, and yeah, one, one last thing, never write student assignment on your portfolio. Own every single thing you post up. Don't write you're a student, you're a concept artist, you're a 3D artist. Don't ever write, oh, I'm a student, this is an assignment I did for class, because they don't want that. They want someone who's like, yeah, I designed this bird tree, and I love bird trees. I am so confident of bird trees, I could design your bird trees. It could be a class assignment, they're not gonna know, it doesn't matter. Because I know when you start out, everything you do is gonna be an assignment. But not a single thing on my portfolio says it was done in a class, yet, this was literally just a character design class. It was like a personal project, combining modern tactical with medieval soldiers. It was a class. It's just as valuable as any of your classwork, but I didn't tell them that. I'm a freelance concept artist. Um, so, and, and get a LinkedIn as well, guys, come on. Get it set up now. Start building your contacts, even if you're not ready for work. Just, it takes a long time to build up a network, so start it now. Um, yeah, I, th I didn't really answer any questions there. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. I'll end the stream. Thank you guys for coming here and listening to me ramble. Um, <laughs> well, that just feels weird. Um, yeah, cool, thank you. <laughs>